Hey guys, check out this cool dude with his palm trees and his leaning against the vehicle and his sunglasses and his hoodie with an equation on it. What does this equation mean? Let's find out. What does it even say? Pretty sure it's this right here and I believe I matched it up pretty well. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. So first let's focus on the square root of negative one. So typically you have something like the square root of nine is equal to three, and that's because three squared is equal to nine. The square root is the inverse operation for the square. So really we want to know what squared would give us negative one. That would be the answer to this. There is no real number that would work. You can't multiply the same real number by itself to get a negative number. To find a solution to this, we're going to create i such that i squared is equal to negative one. Now it might seem weird that we can just create a solution to this, but it does open up a whole exciting world of mathematics that several branches take advantage of. And there ends up being a lot of real world applications for this imaginary number too. So now we're gonna say the square root of negative one is equal to i. Let's move this down, put a box here, and in the place of the square root of negative one, let's put i. And now we can move on to this part. y sub two minus y sub one is the difference between two y values. That's measuring the rise. And then x sub two minus x sub one is the distance between two x values that's measuring a run. So this is measuring the rise of a run between two points, or in other words, the slope between those two points. And it's pretty common to use m to represent the slope. For example, in y equals mx plus b, m represents the slope. So in the place of this, we can plug in m. And then let's move on to the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is equal to five. And this is only equal to positive five, not negative five. The square root always outputs the positive value. And now I think I know what's going on. This says I am five. This reminds me of explain it like I'm five. The idea of taking a complex concept and explaining it in a very simple manner. Or another thing you could be doing, all of this might somehow be equal to times two. So it might be saying something like I am a 10, which is like a 10 on a scale of one to 10. Let's find out if it's one of those. Next, we have this here. This is called sigma notation or summation notation. And the idea is we're gonna add up a whole bunch of these. We'll have one over n factorial where we plug in a zero. Then we'll have one over n factorial where we plug in one, and then two for n, three for n, four for n. And this is gonna go on forever. So let's start out by evaluating the first couple ones. This bottom one, the one over five factorial, means the same thing as one divided by five times four times three times two times one. And then this one, the one over four factorial, would be one over four times three times two times one. And then we have three times two times one, two times one, and one. And then for the zero factorial, zero factorial is equal to one. If you want to learn more about this, there's so much content out there explaining this. Just look up zero factorial equals one, and you can see why that is. But for now, we'll just accept it as equal to one. And we can take all of these values and add them together. The finite sum of these first six terms is equal to 2.716 recurring, where the six will go on forever. Or if we add on three more terms, this is approximately equal to 2.71828. And if we let it add up all the terms going on to infinity, that will equal exactly E. E is a special constant with a lot of fun properties, and one of the properties happens to be this infinite series is equal to E. If you don't know about E, I'd recommend looking it up. There's a lot of cool things to learn. But for now, in the place of this, we can plug in E. And then last, we're going to finish with the XY. XY is a plane. We have the X axis and the Y axis. This makes an XY plane. When you compare a relationship between X and Y, you can plot a lot of interesting things on an XY plane. And now I think I know what's going on with this guy's hoodie. It's basically I am five X plane, or in other words, explain it like I'm five. So he's trying to learn about complex concepts, but he wants them explained to him in a simplified way, as if you were explaining it to a five-year-old. I gotta respect that. That is a very positive attitude. He really is a cool guy. How exciting.